what is going on? Surprise, guys. Not only do you get me for this intro, but you get an extra day of revival. The wonderful pastor here at Encounter Church invited Daniel and the team to come minister for one more day here in Northern California, NorCal. And we're super excited. And I just wanted to tell you all to subscribe, to like this video, comment down below how you've been touched by these videos or what Jesus is doing here. And make sure you go on the website, www.thesupernaturallife.org, to become a forerunner and just to find out where we're gonna be next and just to get involved in everything that we're doing here. We've had a wonderful time here. All of our forerunners have been amazing. And I'm kinda sad it's coming to an end. We love California so much. But we shall be back. We have Texas next week, so we're just expectant for that. But just jump on in for this amazing time here at Encounter Church. And yeah, we'll see you soon. You know, it's funny, in 2015, guys, you can have a seat in the presence of the Lord. In 2015, I was praying, and I was in a mother-in-law suite near my house, at my house, actually, and I was on my knees, and I had just watched a sermon from a man named uh, Rodney Howard Brown. I watched the sermon, and, and what he said, and he said he was praying one day, and he was telling God, he was putting a demand on God, and he told God, if I don't get this, I'm going to come up there and get it from you. And it provoked me. I mean, I was a, I was an in-house evangelist at the time. And um, I said, you know what? If you do it for one, you do it for another. So I went on in my prayer closet. And I remember he was saying he kept screaming for the fire, God. So instantly, I started saying, hey, burn me with fire. I had no idea. You know, I thought I was asking for the goosebumps and electricity on the moment, right? I just screamed for 30 minutes, I think. Baptize me in fire! I just kept saying it. Baptize me in fire right now. I mean, I just... Baptize me in fire! Baptize me in fire! I just kept screaming it. Baptize me in fire. Baptize me in fire right now. I kept saying that over and over and over and over. And then nothing was happening in that moment. And I remember the words of what the man of God said. And I said, hey, I'm going to do what he said. Hey, I pointed my finger to the sky. Because he's above all the heavens and earth, right? I said, hey. Listen to me. I know you hear me. Don't act like you don't. I tell him to talk sometimes. I still respect him, right? I said, hey, listen to me. It's 2015, and I need to ask you something. I've laid up all my dreams. I've stopped cage fighting. I've stopped all these things. I don't know what to do. But there's one thing I know that you will do. I'm asking you now. Use me as a matchstick to revival. That's what I asked him. Or I will come up there to you and find it myself. It's pretty heavy demand. Well, obviously, I didn't get raptured or anything. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> in the flesh, but not in the spirit. If you understand what I'm saying. So I went on up there, hung out with him for a second, and uh, I come out of that prayer closet, and my life went to everything bad. Now, hold on. In a good way. After I said that prayer, everything wrong in me, <laughs> started to show up. See, sometimes we think, why am I going through this? It, when you get, what, do you have, what do you think happens if you get baptized in the fire of God? See, we, all, we, we get a little bit emotional sometimes and we think that the fire of God is a feeling on your body. No, the fire of God is consuming and it's continual and it never stops. See, people that are in hell today hate the fire of God. Because they rejected God. And now they got to know that that fire was real. 
So instead of embracing the glory of it and becoming like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, the fire is eradicating him for eternity. Just burn, burn, burn. But guess what, my Christian brothers and sisters? The fire of God is good for us. Isn't that wonderful? So my life just was getting all burned up. Things that were wrong with me started showing up. I'm thankful today. Even if something else shows up, I'm just thankful. Because I know it's another chance for glory to glory, right? Amen. But when you ask to be baptized in fire, know this. Don't look for the millionaire status and the nice cars and the rainbows and butterflies of the man or woman you've been praying for forever just to show up at your front door. No, 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 no. I know some of you. I want my man now. I want my Boaz. Give me my Ruth. You know what I'm saying? But the truth is this, you're going to go straight into a refining season when you ask for the baptism of the Father, the Holy Spirit. You're going to get refined and turned into what He always wanted you to be. You're going to get your call and destiny birthed. But here's the thing. Many are called. Few are chosen. You know why? Because not everybody wants to embrace that fire. Nobody wants... I was talking to my friend right here. and I, uh, No piercing. What do you go by? Your auntie. <laughs> I was talking to my friend Monty, and we were talking about, like, just how it takes full surrender. He was talking about the rich man, how the rich man didn't want to give up that one little thing. See, here's the thing. This is going to hurt some of your feelings in a good way. Remember, it hurts, but it's good. The scroll hurt in the beginning, but it got good taste later on, right? Listen, better to the first touch, but then it gets sweet like honey. When the Lord wants you to become more like Him, and He wants you to be the one He's called you to be, your heart will be checked. And there'll be things in your life that you're gonna have a hard time. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You want me to sell my car? You want me to give what to who? But that comes from my great grandpa. You see, he gets idols out of your life because he's a jealous guy. At the end of the day, the things you hold on to are going to perish anyway. Store not yourself stuff on earth where moth and rust will destroy it, but put your treasures in heaven. That means this. See, I know what it feels like to be at nothing. I've had something went to nothing. You come back to something. Right? And when you've been through that season, you don't care. Take it. Bye. Boo -boo. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Just go and take it. Thief comes and wants to take something for you. Say, don't have to steal it. Here it is. That's how you get. See, because they're not stealing from you anymore. They're stealing from the king. Because I'm from a kingdom, and my kingdom is everything. So you don't get all attached to stuff because you know your king has a great return rate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Today some of you will be released from some of those idols in your life. It might be soul ties. But God has brought you from a situation and you don't want to get out of that situation because you're tied to the emotional attachment that was in it. Yeah. And the Lord, uh, not the Lord, but the enemy starts using excuses in your head. It's okay to stay in this position. No, it's not. It's time to change. Idolatry. Idolatry is tricky and it's sneaky. And in this hour, it must come out of the church. Amen. It must come out of God's people. Yeah. When God causes a change, it changes. Yes. Right? When God, when God refines, he refines. And he burns. My goal is to convict in a good way. Not condemn you. But I gotta take I gotta tell you the truth to get you to the truth. His name is Jesus Christ, and he has a purpose and a plan and a destiny for your life. So today, church, all of you, all the way up to the rafters, let me ask you a question. Today, if Jesus says surrender something, if you say give this up and follow me, would you do it? Would you be willing? Let me tell you why you would want to do that really fast, okay? 
I want to read this real quick. 2 Corinthians 3, 7 to 18. Please, guys, don't fall asleep in church today. Just give me five more minutes, baby. Maybe ten. All right. The old way with laws etched in stone led to death. Though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look in Moses' face. Remember, it was the ministry of condemnation. So they couldn't look at God's glory because they were condemned in their hearts. Right? For his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. So there was a fading glory even on that. Amen? Catch this for me, okay? Shouldn't we expect for greater glory under the new way? Now that the Holy Spirit is giving life, guys, come on now. <clears throat> All right. If the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, I mean, he called that glorious, right? Wonderful, wonderful. The law is good in what it does. How much more glorious is the new way which makes us right with God? Mm -mm -mm. In fact, the first, for that first glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way which has been replaced was glorious, how much more glorious is the new which remains forever? Since this new way gives us such confidence, you hear that? Confidence. Tell your neighbor, I got confidence. Yeah, the confidence. That's the key. Not the condemnation, the confidence in what the new law is, the new way is doing, right? Listen to this. We can be very bold. Bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. You know why? Because they might have dropped dead. You know? But the people's minds were hardened. And to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And we know that's happening still with some people in Jerusalem and stuff, right? All right. And the veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, listen, whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's right. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect. Look, guys, it's wonderful. The glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. You get to co-share. Can you say, I'm a co-heir? Co-heir. That co-shares? Co-shares. In the glory. In the glory. Are you okay with it? Yeah. I think it's wonderful. You get to be touched by God's glory and not die. Amen. Think about it. If you catch what I'm putting down, you pick up what I'm putting down, oh, yeah, oh, oof. you're going to shine when you go out. Your face, mm, mm, and when you go out, the people be like, what's that? Let me tell you about it. Yeah? It's true. When you walk around everywhere, you should be a glorious one. You should be, have you ever seen bug zappers? You should be like a human bug zapper. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Come on, baby. That old thing died in you just now. How you doing? <laughs> Happens all the time. Go out with me in public sometimes, you know, when I'm really running out there. Hey. It's fun. It's fun. Everybody in the supernatural life community, we all do that. You guys do that here. Some of you, it's just wonderful, right? We just bug zap everybody, right? Just bug zap. Pss, 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 pss. It's wonderful. Y'all ain't gonna get that out your head. You'll go home today. Pss, 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 pss. <laughs> My bug zap ministry, amen. Zap them all. Is that a demon? Come on, demon. You're gonna be close. Y'all watch YouTube, you know, if you watch my YouTube videos, I'm like, come over here. What's your name? I've been here for 3,000 years when you just lost all of it in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the dry place. We're living in a day where God's people must know who they are and what they carry. 
The darkness in this world is increasing, which means it is the church's chance. Here's your chance, guys. To take hold of this opportunity to show the world God's glory by shining the light of His Son, Jesus Christ. Right now, you ever heard of opportunities? You have an opportunity. You have a Kairos moment. You have a moment that can be redeemed. Right now in the earth. The Lord is saying it's your moment, church. Will you take it? Will you take heed to what I am doing? It's your chance. It's the chance for the biggest awakening to hit. Can you perceive it? Can you hear it? I hope you really get it. Romans 8, 18 to 19. Yet we suffer. Romans 8, 18 to 19. Yet we suffer now as nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Welcome to that day. I ain't letting no rock speak on my behalf. I'll tell you that. I'm walking around a rock goes, except Jesus. Except, why are you talking to me? Because the people would not shut up. I'm going to talk now. You know what I'm saying? I don't want a rock to do my job. All creation does. Why do you think we have earthquakes and tsunamis and all that stuff? Because the earth is groaning. We're not, I'm not a doomsday preacher. Man. I'm a glory preacher. Amen. I know when all these things are going on and things are happening and the devil's ramping up, I'm just like, uh-oh, church, wake up. Jesus had the power to calm the storm. What we do is we go, look at the pending judgment, we're all going to die. Storm, you stay right there. You ain't taking none of these souls. I'm still here. And I got a gospel to preach for Jesus Christ. You stay right there. You tell that tectonic plate, plate, tectonic plate, whatever it's called in California, you stay right there. Don't you dare snatch, because I'm still here. You ain't sinking none of these people. Talk to the land. Talk to the wind. Talk to the seas. Know your authority. If Jesus can do it, you can do it, because the same... Jesus lives in you. The same spirit is in you. You see what I'm saying? All right, so let's not get doom and gloom. Yes, we say Maranatha. We say, come, Lord Jesus. We want it. Paul says, I, it's better I have to come out of this thing and I go be with him. But I got he's like, I've known Jesus so much, I got to bear with you. No. Oh, for your sake. That's what Paul said. He knew there was something better. He wanted to be in it, but he said, I'm going to. Do my dues here on earth. That's how we all have to be. We don't want none to perish, right? right. right. The Lord. We who are God's children carry the awakening and revival that has been longed for. Right? Revival means God's life-giving power is on the scene and salvation, healing, and deliverance are manifesting. You can always tell who carries God's glory by what is happening around them. Revival comes, watch, here's a big key. You ready? Revival comes from heart posture. Not how much you're praying for it. Your heart posture towards the Lord. Revival comes from heart posture. Do we actually believe what the word says about us? If we do the revival that is, we do the revival is our personal portion. You hear that? And we become a drink offering to many. We become carriers of the new wine. Yeah. You hear that? You should be poured out. Paul said this, Philippians 2, 17 to 18. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Today, I want to be like a drink offering, poured out for God's glory. You all should want to be a drink offering. 
right? You all should want to be a displayer of his glory, of his majesty, of his goodness. You are no longer under the old, old covenant. You behold, you're under the new covenant. You no longer have to pray and beg. You only receive. Amen. Ask and receive. Jesus said, only believe. You have not because you ask not. You ask amiss. You don't know the divine will of God for your life. Some people will come to me and say, if it's the will of God. I say, there's no if in the will of God. It is or it ain't. Right? Old time religion goes, if. They pray over a dead person, Lord, if it's your will. That's doubt and unbelief. It is. We pray for healing if you want to heal it. Uh -uh. If you want the demon to come out, the demon will go, ha, ha, ha. You don't know who you are. Authority. All authority through Christ. All power through Christ. Everything is your portion through Christ. Are you okay? It's so, so simple. It, the gospel is so simple, our minds can't comprehend it sometimes. Especially as analytical folks that need to have everything structured and put together. Nothing wrong with it. It's good for excellence, right? But when it comes to the simplicity of the gospel, analytical mindsets can't figure it out. And then you become like Thomas saying, I need to poke a hole in no man. Just accept his simplicity. Paul was a scholar. I mean that dude had an all Pharisee of Pharisees. And he said this. He said all that stuff I learned is excuse me, doo doo. Done. Nothing. Gone. Out. Trash. Compared to the riches found in Christ. It's a simple gospel with a simple truth. Yes and amen. Let your yes be yes and no be no. Amen. Amen. So I tell you this. Let me take a drink of water really fast. I don't know which one's mine. They're all good. Take a drink of water. Yeah. All right, let me tell you this. How many of you, be honest, some of you might not, y'all might be new to this so you don't understand. I don't know. But how many of you have prayed, Lord, send revival? All of us, right? All of us. Most of us that understand what the word revival means. So we prayed that. The church has prayed for a long time. We've seen glimmers and glimpses of it throughout history. We've seen it. But today, God's calling for every personal revival in people's life to connect. It calls revival. I call this season the activating of the saints. That's the season we're in. The activation of the saints. Okay? So what am I saying? I'm not saying quit doing church inside. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying become who you're supposed to be outside. Because this is a place we come to get equipped. We come to get sent. We come to get built up and sent out. Every church should be an equipping center and also a place we celebrate. Like we celebrate the baby dedications. Oh, we're going to celebrate. We're going to commit more lives to Christ. Right? We celebrate the healings that have happened. We rejoice in the deliverances people have went through. We rejoice in baptism. We rejoice in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's how you know a church has revival. Is when those things are happening. I love encounter. I love the word encounter. Encounter church. Well, that's, tr that's catchy. I'm going to come have an encounter today. So you know when you come here, you're going to have a encounter. It's a, it's a prophetic guarantee. Church with encounter. Hmm, I like that. Let me try this. What is this feeling during worship? Why am I crying? Can somebody tell me, have you met Jesus? No. Well, you just entered into his presence. Let me tell you about it. And then they say, I've been in this whole life. Nobody I meet people all the time. They tell me Christians haven't introduced them to an encounter with Jesus. I'm like, where is the church, man? I was listening to a video this morning about the Travis Scott concert. I said, this is crazy. They said it was the most demonic feeling presence. People were doing the music, doing what he was saying. And nothing against him. I want him to get saved, right? But they said they felt demons coming into their body. No. 
See, the enemy is a perverter. So when we're up here praising and giving glory to Jesus Christ, what's happening? His presence, his power is inhabiting. But the people in the world are saying all these bad things and what's inhabiting them? What you speak out, what you worship is what you're kidding. You know that? And there's parents right now, their kids aren't coming home. Sad. Right? Yep. But if the church, see me, this is my mindset. I'm a nut, man. <laughs> see, if the church was open, instead of staying away from the concert, come on. Ooh, come on. Come we would have walked right through the gates of hell. You know, in, in Universal, they have something called Halloween Horror Nights in Florida. I went there twice. I got in line. I went through the haunted houses. Well, man. But I preached the gospel in line. Ah. And God told me this. I was in line. Me and my boy Isaiah. Where's Isaiah? Back there. We were talking to him, right? What did he say, Isaiah? Why are you Christians in this line? I said, for you. <laughs> I'm not your normal Christian. Why are you, are you celebrating Halloween? No. I'm here to give the devil a headache. But you know, you always got a Pharisee somewhere. Why'd you pay for the ticket to get in? Because souls are costless. We got to go in. We got to infiltrate, you know? And I'm not talking about going in and tell them all they're going to hell. No, you need to be sneaky like an undercover serpent, man. He says, become wise as a serpent. So you're under there looking like everybody else. You know, you got your shirt on, your clothes on, you're walking in, like Halloween's all that great stuff. And then all of a sudden, you go, hey, what y'all mean? You want to feel something? That's how I do it. I don't even, sometimes I don't even have to say anything. I told one young man, I said, hey, I believe in the power of God. You want to experience it? I got the videos on, on things. He said, come here. I said, come here, boy. Come here, come here. Give me a hand. I took his hand. I said, I hope he goes get it. You know what the young man did? He said, what was that? Yo. <laughs> Whoa. And his friend goes, what happened, dude? And his friend goes, dude, me too, man. So I prayed for his friend. And you know what caught me, man? You know, caught me this dude wasn't a believer, right? I didn't get him work quite there, but it was a seed, right? And he said this walking away. He goes, thank you for coming in here and being a blessing. Wow. It's crazy, right? And I didn't do much. And then me and Isaiah, we were walking around praying for the workers. We were praying for other people. We had a dude just fresh out of jail. I mean... These are the people that are in those areas, man. But our theology has taught us to stay away, stay comfortable. You know what? This is like 2% of what I do, man. I'm, I'm always on fire. Right? I love it out there, man. I love telling people the good news of Jesus and watching them, a person who knows no better, encounter Christ. So, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. I'm saying now, my opinion, when them concerts are going on, we need to get together as groups and go in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when them dead bodies are floating across the crowd, we grab the dead body and we say, come here. Yeah. 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 And, we, and we say, come alive. Yeah. And the body comes alive and the demon of death comes off of them. Yeah. And now you have revival in the crowd of people. Yeah. says they didn't love their life unto death. If you're still trying to save your life, you're not living. I want to say something. Oh, this one right here. That mask ain't going to save you. Stand, 
this old uh -huh. I don't. Uh -huh. And shot my kid again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us, bro. Tell it. Uh -huh. See, Lord didn't say he gave me a spirit of fear. I'm long suffering and patient, but I got the mic right now unless they take me out. You give me power, love, and fear. You know what happens? You know why sickness takes people out? Because they get anxiety when it hits. And then their body reacts even more. And then their lungs start to collapse. Then they go, I can't breathe. Now they get asphyxiated. And death is. And all of a sudden. Because you gave in all the way. Let me tell you something. I learned this as a cage fighter. As long as you can breathe, you're alive. If you get 10% oxygen in there, you're alive. When you feel like something's going to take you out, you stand on the word and you use it. You say, Christ lives in me. No disease, no sickness, no death. No nothing can stop the Christ in me. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen? Now, with every portion of faith, okay? I know we all got measures around different places. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just, I said, my opinion, which is Christ's. <laughs> Look, I'm a faith guy. I have to live by it. It says the just shall live by faith. You're justified by faith. You're healed by faith. You're delivered by faith. You meet the glory of God through faith. You become revival through faith. You take over darkness by faith. You live by faith. All right? That's how we live. Christ is everything to me. Everything. Now, will I wear a mask to save a soul? Sure. No problem. I'll go that far. I'm not against it. I'm going there. Do I want to? Now, will I do the other stuff? You won't catch me. No. It's my, my, my opinion, <clears throat> which is Christ. Okay. <laughs> I don't condemn you guys, okay? I'm not. I don't believe anybody that has done that is condemned. I don't believe that. I'm just saying I'm, I'm here to build your faith. Right. Not condemn you. Right. Okay, so if you did anything, great. We'll get the poison out your blood. But I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm here to help. I'm here today to wake the church up all over the world. I'm traveling. Traveling all the time. People don't know how I do it. I'm traveling because somebody has to wake up the church. Somebody has to tell the truth. And I know this man of God tells the truth. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying, wherever I go, I speak the same message to the same people. Church, wake up. Wake up. You are a free people. They serve a free Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Good. We're going to see. Today, I'm going to pray that a grace will come upon you that will ignite you for revival. Yeah. I'm going to pray that you will burn with the fire of God. Man. Yeah. I'm going to pray that the glory of God will come upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I'm going to pray you get ignited with a passion and hunger for souls. I'm going to pray today that you will lay your life down for the sake of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray today that you die in the flesh and you live in the spirit. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray that lying enemy to stop speaking to you. I'm going to pray if anything is in your body that doesn't belong there, that it's going to come up and up. Amen? I'm going to pray some of you get your sanity back. I'm going to pray those burdens on some of you ladies and men that are worried about your family to come on off. I'm going to pray anxiety to leave your body. I'm going to pray that witch Jezebel to go out your window. You know? I'm going to pray Leviathan to take your scales off of you. I'm going to do all that for you in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for salvation. Now, when I want to ask you this. There's a guy named Jesus. He's a wonderful guy. He's God and man, actually. He's the incarnate being.
that displays God's glory, right? He is God. He died a death that we were worthy of. He took our place. He actually loved us so much that he came to get us back. You understand? And then what he did is, you know, he went up to the mercy seat, laid his body there with that precious blood. Is poured out for all the sins of mankind. And he sent his Holy Spirit so we could be empowered to be bold as lions. And to preach the truth of, with conviction and power. 1 Corinthians 4, Pope 20. I don't come to you with wise, persuasive words, but I come to you with a demonstration of his power. See, I know what Jesus did for me. I know how he changed my life. I know the encounters I had to make me this way. The anointing is upon me. The anointing is upon you. To preach the good news to the poor. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To open the eyes of the blind. To let the deaf hear. To proclaim that perfect and acceptable day of the Lord, the day of salvation. New wine, 2,000 year old vintage wine. Guys, you know what I got to say to this. There's only one way to end it by saying what Jesus said. It is finished, man. We done.